Hello and welcome my dear students and viewers for my yet another video on the channel on module 8 exponential function. This video is exclusive for the revision for grade 9 students and this is module 8 lesson 1 that we are going to be covering today. We are going to cover this lesson in two parts and today's session is part 1 of the same lesson. So let's start with exponential functions and our learning objectives or outcomes in this session would be to identify the situation and problems which are modeled by linear or exponential function. So in this session you will be able to identify and distinguish between these two types of function linear or exponential function. So let's dive into the video and get to know what kind of questions can you expect for your coming exams? Before we get to know what is the difference between linear and exponential functions and we use it to recognize, let's get to know a little bit more about exponential function. So this slide is on the definition of an exponential function and before we understand how to solve question based on it, let's understand what is an exponential function. So an exponential function is a function of the form y equal to a multiplied with b to the power x. So let's recall about an exponent first. So an exponent is of the form where you have a base and you have raised it to some power. Yeah, so this is an exponent, b to the power x. So in a similar way, from the definition of exponent, we are moving on now to a proper definition of an exponential function. So as you see, here the variables are y and x. y is written as the function which is equal to a multiplied with b to the power x. b to the power x is the exponent. Now, when we talk about a definition of an exponential function, it has some restrictions on these two variables. So the first restriction on variable a is that it has to be a non-zero value. Now, think about why this is an important restriction. Let's see what will happen if a is 0. If a is 0, this whole function will reduce to y equal to 0, which is nothing but your x-axis. So we will not have any function or any exponential function if a is 0. So that's why this restriction is important that you need to remember that a has to be non-zero. Next is that your b has to be positive. So b has to be strictly more than 0. If b is again 0, there is no function, there is no exponential function. Or if your b is um, a negative, then it becomes a negative exponent. So we are not dealing with that. We are taking this case specifically where b is positive. Another restriction that you need to remember is that b is not equal to 1. Now if b is 1, what is going to happen? There is again no exponent and the function reduces to y equal to a which is just going to be a linear function or a straight line. So these three restrictions I want you to remember are pretty important when we talk about an exponential function. Okay now here the base which is b is a constant and the exponent which is x is a variable. Now exponential function if you look at their graphs as I'm going to show you in the next slide always are categorized as a non-linear function. Means what? Means that if you are going to draw the graph of an exponential function, it will be a curve. It will not be a straight line. So linear is a Linear function, as you know, is a function whose graph is a straight line. So non-linear or exponential function are exactly opposite. They are in the form of curves. It can be increasing. It can be decreasing, as you would see later in the lesson. But then, yes, definitely, it's not non-linear. Uh, it's not linear. So it's definitely non-linear. Okay, so again, a quick recap in words for the definition. So y equal to a multiplied with b to the power x. So uh, a and b are the two variables whose value you need to be getting or finding in a question in order to be defining your exponential function. And the three restrictions that we already discussed are really important. So let's get into some examples. The first example here which I've taken is where your uh, if you want to just get your a and b for each part, let's compare. So y equal to a multiplied with b to the power x. 
y and x are your variables a in this example is 2 b in this example is 3 now let's see whether these a and b match the three conditions the restrictions that we know so definitely a is non-zero because it is 2 then b is 3 which is not equal to 1 so these conditions are true and it's always positive so this is a well-defined exponential function it's a good example second example again if you compare it with the definition your a is 1 and your b is 4 again all the conditions are satisfied so it's a well-defined uh, exponential function last one here a is 1 and b is 1 by 2 now the only difference that you see in this one is if you try to do the graph since your b is less than 1 it is going to be a dk it is going to be a decreasing graph now one way of doing the graph would be that you do the x and y table which can be done without um, if you are not having an access to a calculator so just draw the table of values of x and y and do your graph by joining the dots that's your traditional method you already know and if you have an access to a calculator uh, you can use the graphing calculator for doing the graph instantly also there is a tool called Desmos that we've been using so often that can also be used to do the graph so let's see how the graph of exponential function looks like traditional graph and how it is to be drawn so here I'm taking the graph of an exponential function and if you see this screen carefully you will realize that we have used Desmos the online graphing calculator for doing this graph okay so the let me write again the equation that you already know that we have seen in the last slide so y equal to a multiplied with b to the power x in this example i have taken a as 1 and b as 2 so that means the graph that i'm drawing is 2 to the power x now here because your b is more than 1 this is going to be a growth graph and it will be increasing for sure and as you see here from this is my x-axis this is my y-axis and my graph from negative infinity to positive infinity is going up up and up so it's an increasing graph and here um, it is an exponential growth graph to be very specific now a lot of things you can observe looking at the graph uh, we will be discussing those points one by one but just for now you can see that it is an increasing graph later in the lesson we are going to discuss on its end behavior as well and then your x-axis it seems like this graph is on the negative side of x-axis getting very very close but it's an approximately close graph it's not exactly touching the x-axis so in this case your x-axis acts as an asymptote for the graph of this exponential function uh, i hope you remember from our sessions that what is an asymptote in case you have forgotten i will quickly recall for you asymptote is that line or that graph or that curve which uh, the graph of a given function looks like is approximately very very close but it is not exactly touching so in this example your x-axis the negative side acts as an asymptote for the given graph okay so now let's look at the difference between an exponential and linear function you have an idea of both the different kind of functions now so let's see what uh, makes them different from each other so while in an exponential function there is no rate of constant or rate of change which is a constant value but when we look at a linear function it does have a constant rate of change and if you remember when we are drawing the graph of a linear function a general form is y equal to mx plus b then your rate of change also has a specific name which is slope so your rate of change or the difference between the two points can be very easily calculated with the formula for slope and um, it does have a con common ratio it means it has the same slope so any point you're going to take for example you look at this graph the blue one with the dots is your linear graph it is the graph of a straight line and the line that we have taken here is y equal to x so if you take any two points on this line for example point a point b and you try to calculate its slope i hope you remember the formula for slope is 
using the two points as this one. So you just take any two points. For example, I take point A. Point A here has coordinate 2 comma 2. So first you take the x point, then you take the y point. Then for B, it is same 4 comma 4. So this is the second point. So let's calculate. So the first point is x1, y1. The second point is x2, y2. So what I'm going to calculate for this linear function. So the linear function y equal to x we are talking about. This is the straight line graph that you see. So I'm going to calculate the slope by subtracting the y coordinate. So 4 minus 2 divided by 4 minus 2. Both are same, so it is going to be 1. So here the rate of change is constant. It is same. Even if you take any other two points like this and this, it is going to be the same slope. Now let's look at exponential behavior or exponential graph. So it does not have a constant rate of change. So this is very, very important point of difference. See what kind of question can come in your exam. So this is a word problem from this lesson where you need to identify exponential behavior. So either uh, in a word problem you will have a set of data given. So like in this question you have uh, some sentences given in the form of a word problem and then you are always also given in the same question a table of values. I'm going to just show uh, you that table in the next slide and what you need to check here, what you need to determine whether the set of data which is given the tabular data, the table which I'm going to show you is showing or displaying exponential behavior, yes or no. And if yes, why? If no, why? You have to reason out your solution. Okay, so let's read the word problem together. The, the Richter scale measures the energy that an earthquake releases and assigns a magnitude to it. These orders of magnitude can be approximated by comparing them to the explosive power of TNT. So a lot of different words are given. You just need to look at the table of values, the set of data and check whether it is showing exponential behavior or not. So the key concept that we are going to use in order to check that is this one. I've written it again uh, here from the previous slide because it's very, very important. I'm going to put two stars here to tell you that whenever you get such a question where you need to check whether it is showing exponential behavior or not, or you need to identify for exponential behavior, or you need to compare linear or exponential, you're going to use the same key concept. So I'm going to repeat it for you and then show you how we are going to use this. Okay, so note that in linear function, so if it's a linear function, like we saw in the last slide, the rate of change remains constant. So there is one fixed same slope. Hmm? So we have the concept of slope for linear function. Whereas as you see in the exponential function, uh, which we are going to just see in a few minutes from now, the rate of change increases by the same factor. So the slope or the rate of change is not same. Even the graph is different. So for linear, uh, it has a linear, a straight line and therefore the same slope. However, for an exponential function, you saw the graph in the previous slides. It was either increasing or decreasing. So the rate of change for the exponential function is not going to be same. It is not going to be constant, but it will increase or decrease by the same factor. So this is very important. So let's now look at the table and see which is which is the case which is happening. Is it the same rate of constant making it a linear function or is it increasing by the same factor making it a exponential function? Okay, so now this is the table of values which is given to you in the question. The first column denotes the magnitude. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It has 8 values and as you can see it is increasing by 1 every time. So it's following a linear pattern here. Let's look at TNT in tons. Now you need to determine for this column, the second column that you see which has TNT in tons, whether it is exponential behavior yes or no this is what you need to do so you will look at these values and correspondingly see if the rate of change is same or not so here if you see 0 0.6 gets converted to 6 in next step 
gets converted to 60 next it changes to 600 next to 6000 and so on so i hope you all can see a pattern so what is the pattern let's identify so case one when the magnitude is changing from one to two this step first step of the question then where uh, how the tnt in tons is changing it is changing or increasing from 0 0.6 to 6 same thing is mentioned here let's read together as the order of magnitude coming from the first column increases from 1 to 2 the amount of tnt that is approximately equal in magnitude increasing from 0 0.6 to 6 tons so this is second column where you see the increase so i hope you all can see it is changing by a factor of 10 means if you multiply the previous term 0 0.6 with 10 what you are going to be getting is the next term now is this pattern repeated let's check so if you multiply 6 with 10 yes you are getting 60 again 60 with 10 you are getting 600 and so on so i hope you all can observe that there is a pattern and that each step you are multiplying with the same factor so even if the magnitude is from 2 to 3 next step the amount of tnt is approximately equal uh, in magnitude and it is increasing by the same factor so because the same factor is there from our key concept which i showed you in the previous slide definitely it is going to show exponential behavior so the answer is yes it does show exponential behavior and the reason is that because the tnt in tons is increasing by the same factor of 10. okay let's try one more word problem so let's read it and there's also a table of values given to you in the same question where i want you to identify and compare for exponential behavior so let's read it together after world war ii the television became a major consumer product in the united states and the percentage of households with the tv in each year in 1950 is provided in the table so in the first column you see the year and in the second column you see the percentage of households with tv now you need to notice for a pattern so as from 1950 to 1957 the number of year is increasing by one let's see what is the change happening in the percentage of households so observe if you see a pattern and then like the previous question you need to determine in the same question whether the set of data displays exponential behavior yes or no so is it going to be multiplied is it going to be divided just notice is there any pattern in the numbers so you have to concentrate on these numbers from 9 to 79 check your answer so in the question you had to say whether this data displays exponential behavior or not <clears throat> so what is our key concept let me write here for you so the data shows exponential behavior let's recall from what we have covered till now if and only if this set of values the ones that you see here they change or they increase or they decrease by the same factor so are they increasing definitely this is an increase 9 to 24 34 and so on so are they increasing by same factor that's we need to check if yes then yes it is showing exponential behavior if no it is not showing exponential behavior so let's observe the values so from 9 to 24 from 24 to 34 so definitely there's no same uh, factor that we can multiply a previous value to get the next one if you try to subtract also uh, these are different different numbers so from uh, 9 to 14 what is the difference you can calculate for each part in a similar way so here for the first step when you subtract 24 with 9 it is 15 then if you subtract 34 with 24 it is 10 so it is changing by a factor of 10 then again if you see the difference keeps uh, changing it's not a fixed difference now it is 11 then again it is 11 and then if you see again uh, this difference comes out to be different so 65 minus 50 that's what you'll be doing here so it's 9 and then next is 72 multi, uh, subtracted from 65 so that is 7 and again if you see the last one so it is 
79 minus 72. So that is 7 again. So this factor, the increase, the addition that you are doing or the subtraction, whatever you say, is here giving you different, different numbers. So it's not changing with the same factor. Also, there is no number that you can multiply the previous term to get the next term. So definitely the increase is not by same factor. So what's your answer? Is it exponential behavior? Yes or no? So definitely you all are correct. Since the factor is not same, it does not show exponential behavior. So this data set, this table that is given to you does not show exponential behavior. I hope the difference is clear to you. We'll try a few more questions and then summarize this video. Now you girls are ready to go to reveal math and to try the check if you have not done it. So identifying exponential behavior, that's the assignment that has been assigned to you. I will uh, solve one question here for you just to give you a hint and then you can complete the remaining assignment. So let's look at the first question in this assignment on identifying exponential behavior, the check on reveal math. So in the 19th century, the psych psychologist Herman created a formula to approximate how quickly people forget information over time. The approximate percentage of the newly learned information of a person retains over time is shown in the table. So you have the word problem. So you have those sentences given. You have the table given. So let's observe the table and again in a similar way determine or check whether this given data displays exponential behavior or not. So I want you to look at this column very carefully the percentages which are given and then I want you to check whether uh, this percentage this column of table of values is it showing exponential behavior or not. So let's see if the time is increasing by each day. So because this uh, question is um, showing you the table of values where it shows how quickly people forget information over time. So as the number of days would increase, the percentage of retaining that memory will decrease. So this is like an inverse relationship. And I hope you are able to observe that the values in this column of the percentage which is retained is decreasing over time so from 100 to 80 to 64 and so on so it's a decreasing value it's going to be a decreasing graph hmm? so the pattern is going to be decreasing now let's calculate how much decrease is happening so from step 100 it is becoming 80 so how much is the decrease here so from 100 you are subtracting 20 so that's why I put a negative sign so it decreases by 20 next step from 80 to 64 so how much percent it is decreasing let's calculate it is decreasing by 16 next step you can similarly do the calculation 64 minus 51.2 so this is negative 12.8. Now we need not do any further. It's quite evident that even though the values are decreasing, they are not decreasing by the same factor. At step 1, when the number of days changes from 0 to 1, to a negative 20 is the decrease, then negative 16, then negative 12.9. So it is not changing by the same factor. So is it going to be exponential behavior? Yes or no? Choose your answer. So because the percentage retained, it is coming from this column or the number of or the information over time, you can write that also. So it is information over time. Over time means with the number of passing days. So as the number of passing days increases from 0 to 1, there is a negative 20% decrease happening. So this percentage uh, is decreasing that we know very well by different factor. The factor is not same. Hmm? So the first step the factor is negative 20, then negative 16, then negative 12.8 and so on. It is going to change or decrease by different factors. So therefore, this data does not display exponential behavior. 
so i hope it is clear to you how to check for exponential behavior and to identify it correctly please complete the assignment and do a self check on your learning so that was all in today's session i hope you understood the difference between exponential functions and linear function and you were able to identify exponential behavior please put down in the comment section if you have any questions or queries until then this is ms ruchika signing off from the session and don't forget to like share and subscribe the video also hit the bell icon because the next video that's going to be coming up for you will be part 2 of this lesson so where you will be knowing to see what the graph of exponential function looks like and to know its key feature identify intercepts and end behavior very important session coming up see you in my next video bye students